the Conquering Hill podcast. My name is Nicholas Ganger, and I have a very special guest today. Her name is Debbie Specter Wiseman. She is a proven. Uh, she uses proven power of dream work to reveal unvoiced confidence. That has been a multi-year study of Debbie. She is committed to helping others find their voice through her private The Dream Coach programs and best-selling books. Her acclaimed podcast and radio program, The Dream Power Radio and TV show, The Dream Power Show, have reached thousands where she instructs on how to understand and use dreams for greater self-awareness and finding hidden answers to unsolved problems. You can find her at thedreamcoach.net. Welcome to the program, Debbie. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here, Nicholas. Thank you so much. So let me first ask you, what is a dream coach? Describe to the audience, what is a dream coach? Okay. Well, I use a combination of working with dreams and other modalities to help people who feel stuck, unsure of themselves, not quite uh, knowing what their uh, passion is, uh, having lost their self-confidence, all kinds of things where people feel they need a coach to help them. Uh, The tool I use primarily is... uh, dreams, helping people remember their dreams, helping people understand their dreams, because I believe the dreams are the quickest way for us to really get to understand ourselves, because it's our way of our waking mind connecting with our subconscious mind. And once uh, I use dreams as a tool, like I say, to help people understand what is the thing that's holding them back. And once we figure that out by helping them understand their dreams, then we get into different modalities to help them, uh, you know, get rid of, you know, self-limiting beliefs or, or any other kinds of impediments that keep them from reaching the goals or the desires that they want out of life. Excellent. Now, how long have you been uh, studying and helping others? Okay. Well, I like to call dream work my third career, because I actually came into this uh, relatively late in life. Uh, I've been a coach for maybe about seven or eight years now, but I started getting interested in dreams about 10, 12 years ago, uh, because I started to see that they actually did make a difference in my life. Well, elaborate, please. What happened? Okay. Well, like I said, um, I came into dream work later in life because I was one of these people who grew up as what I like to say is being the ultimate fatalist. Life is, you know, just going along the way it is. Uh, You don't control life. Life controls you. And that was kind of the way I lived for, you know, pretty much most of my life. Uh, Then about now we're going about 20 years ago, uh, I got involved with a movie called What the Bleep Do We Know? I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it came yes. out 20 years ago. And uh, my husband and I had, we're in the <clears throat> film business and you know we have a, a company that we were hired to be the post-production supervisors on this movie. So we came into the movie just as filmmakers, not really aware of what the content was. But when we got into working with the movie and I started to see people saying, hey, you can control your life. You, you, once you understand how your brain is controlling you, you can, you can change things. This was a great revelation to me. And it started me on a journey to, you know, try to answer the question, what do I really want out of life? You know, it, am I doing what I really want to do? And if not, how do I get there? And I, you know, studied various things about this point. And it was actually another movie back in 2009 that actually introduced me to dream work. The movie had nothing at all to do with dreams, but one of the participants in the movie uh, was a dream worker. And I got to know her. I got to, through her, uh, get involved in dream circles, which are, for those people who don't know, it's a place where people can gather to talk about their dreams. And one person will, will tell about their dream and the other people help them understand the dream. And by doing this, first of all, I got to see how, why dreams were important. And I got to see the effect it had by getting into a dream, understanding it and seeing what you could actually do with the dream, that it wasn't just some random thought that was going through your, your 
mind in the middle of the night that it actually meant something. You could do something with it. So as a result, uh, I got very interested in dreams. And uh, I took this one. Her name is Kelly Sullivan Walden. And I took her program on how to be a dream life coach. And I started it. It was really just to get more knowledge because I was more interested. And I wasn't really intending to be a coach or to really do anything with it other than self-knowledge and get more self-aware. But during the course of taking the program, I had a dream, which I like to call the dream that changed my life. And as a result of that, I got so much out of that dream. I said, if I can get this much out of a dream, they can have this much of an effect on me. I have to help other people see that they can do the same thing as well. And that's what got me started. Wow, fantastic. Well, let me let me shoot off a couple of, you know, dreams that I've maybe had in in the past, maybe others as well. But first, I had I had this theory. Now, I don't know, it's very difficult to prove, but let me let me bounce it off of you here. So, for example, if I was dreaming, okay, and I had there was someone in my dream that I know of, is it possible that when they're also sleeping at the same time and dreaming of me at the same time? Yes. There's actually a term for it called tandem dreaming. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's not particularly common, but it does happen. And uh, the very interesting thing about dreams is there are people who have fantastic dreams just naturally. It just comes, they, they have vivid profound dreams and they remember them easily. And it's just a very natural thing for them. For most people, it isn't. Most people do have to work at it because dreams can be very elusive. Uh, But yes, people can create the intention to have a dream and share the dream together. Uh, I belong to this organization called the International Association for the Study of Dreams. And they have a conference every year and they have a contest that actually deals with this, where um, it's not so much tandem dreaming, but they will have a, an object and they will put it in an envelope and they will ask people to dream about what is the object in the envelope. And uh, it's surprising how many people guess it or come pretty close mm. to guessing it just from using the power of their dreams to you know get that message that's being sent out into you know the ether. Interesting, interesting. So maybe a common dream for for people, um, for example, say like you're you're floating or you're flying in your dream. I might have had that a handful of times, I'm sure, through through the course of my life. What does that signify? Well, one thing I, I will say from the outset is that each dream is individual to the dreamer. So when I give a general answer, it is a general answer, and it may not mean that to you, given your particular circumstances, because you could have a mm-hmm. dream about flying, I could have a dream about flying, and it could have two entirely different meanings. But in general, flying dreams are like the best dreams you could have, because it's signifying total freedom, total ability to have you know, self-control, uh, elation, you know, all, the, all the adjectives for you know, great feelings. You know, mm-hmm. when, when you're flying. Now, if you're nose diving in a dream, <laughs> you're flying. It's kind of a different aspect, you know, and that, that had a different meaning. But in general, you know, yeah, people strive to have flying dreams. Oh, wonderful. Well, here's maybe an opposite end of the spectrum. Like, I've had a few dreams over the course of my life where, you know, being chased by like dogs or something and like I'm just running as fast as I can. And then eventually the dogs are about to, to get me and bite me. And then I just I force myself to wake up. What does that signify? Okay. Well, that comes into the category of nightmares. So we'll talk mm-hmm. a little bit about nightmares. Uh, my belief is that a nightmare is actually one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself. You might think that's crazy because who likes to have a dream about being chased by something? But And actually, chase dreams are one of the more common nightmares. So we'll talk about that for a second. Please. Uh, and here's, here's my, my theory about this. We all dream every night, whether we remember our dreams or not. And it's you know anywhere from three to nine dreams, depending on our sleep cycle. Everybody's different in that respect. Most times when we're having a nightmare, it is giving us a 
it's telling us to pay attention to whatever is that's happening. And so my thought is that since we dream every night, you may have something that's in bothering you in your in your waking life or or an issue that you're you're pondering in your waking life. You're getting you're having a dream about it. And if you're not paying attention to that dream, it goes away and you never really realize you're having it. So my belief is that a nightmare is your subconscious saying, I've given you all of these dreams that are supposed to help you and you're not paying attention to it. So I better give you a nightmare because you're going to remember this nightmare and now you're going to have to deal with it. So uh, you're having a dream about being chased. Dreams, generally speaking, relate to what's going on in our waking life. So, you know, the question to ask is, you know, why do I feel I'm being chased? What is it that I'm running away from that I'm not dealing with and and I have to deal with? Uh, in, in then you're dealing with the dream. Uh, you know, you could ask yourself all kinds of questions about, you know, what is it that's chasing me? What does it symbolize? Uh, how does that relate to what's going on with what I'm dealing with? You know, what is the issue I'm dealing with? Am I not paying attention to it? Why am I not paying attention to it? And you generally ask yourself a lot of questions to try to get to the bottom of it. In terms of having the, the nightmare itself, one way you can deal with the nightmare is if you're being chased by dogs and you have this dream, if you can get loose enough in your dream to just turn around and look at the dogs and ask them, why are you chasing me? You'd be surprised that you might actually get an answer. Mm. And even if you don't get an answer, uh, if they don't speak to you, they might turn and run away just as soon as you face them because coming to face the situation is really what the dream is trying to tell you. And Interesting, and interesting. Yeah, there's, there's, I'm sure you've had it in your life and I've had like, you know, things happening in your dream and like you're realizing you're, I'm lucid enough, like, hold on, I'm definitely dreaming right now. You know, like to, to get to that point, not every dream I can get there, but I mean, there's been certain dreams where I, I, I can't remember particularly which, you know, what happened, but like something crazy just going to dream. I'm like this, this can't be real. This is, I'm dream. I must be dreaming or like our also like i hope i'm dreaming because it's not because it is a nightmare and like something's happening that i don't want to happen occur in my life but i feel like no this 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 best this better be a dream let me wake up real fast and then like i feel like a sense of relief that is it is a dream it is a nightmare yeah well that's the thing if it's a nightmare uh start paying attention to it you know first of all do you write down your dreams I I may have not many. I but can't remember here, the last time I have. Here here is the key. If you really want to get the most out of your dreams, start mm. keeping a dream journal, and it can be you know a paper journal. If you're old school like me, you have a little notepad right next to your bed, and you wake up, you write down as much of the dream as you can, or you just record it. You know, turn around, get your phone, hit the button, and start recording the dream because if you don't write it down you're just not going to remember it uh unless it's, if it's such a profound nightmare sometimes you do remember it but if it's a dream it's like maybe a little bit shaky or, or even a good dream if you don't write it down you're, you're just not going to remember it uh and then once you have that in your waking mind you can look down and you know analyze it, try to understand it, because it is giving you a message. And when you realize what the message is, and then you take action on the message, that's when the miracles start happening. Wonderful. Now, in in my life, I've had dreams of, of people that have, you know, passed on, um, that have left this world. And um, first off, is that is that common for people to have, to meet, to see people that their loved ones that that have already passed. Is that common? It is very common. It is very common. And I'll ask you, did you get a sense of peace from this? Yes. Yes. So one particular one, um, I, I think about it, you know, quite frequently when things are kind of maybe going a little too crazy in life. And, um, it was from my grandfather. Um, he was, he was the first person who passed away in my life that I truly loved. And then I can, you know, this is going on 20, 
maybe 22 years or so now. And I forget exactly when I, at what point I had the dream, but it was years later. And um, maybe five, no, I'm trying to, maybe I had this dream maybe about 15, 15, 20 years ago. So I was, I was in my twenties when I had, he passed when I was like 16, 17 years old. And like, I had the dream in my twenties. Now I kind of remember it. And um, basically I was in the dream and my grandfather was there and I could have sworn he was alive. You know, he was alive and I was talking to him, but like, he wasn't saying any words. My other, my uncle wasn't sitting next to him and my uncle was trying to convince me. Yeah. Pepe is alive. He's alive. And, you know, of course, I'm sobbing. I'm hugging my grandfather, telling him I love him. I miss him. And I don't remember how long the dream went on, but I vividly remember it. And then he says to me, my grandfather, he says to me, he's like, everything's going to be all right. And so I always take that with me when times are tough or the world's, you know, getting a little crazy or, you know, personal things going on in my life. I just always think back to that, like, everything's going to be all right. Oh, yeah. And that is such the power of dreams and the power of remembering our dreams. Uh, But going back to the point of having dreams about departed loved ones, it is a very common thing. And so many people will have these dreams and it gives them that sense of peace that that loved one, they're okay. And I'm going to be okay. Same message that you got. Uh, very interestingly, in one of the first clients I ever had told me about a dream that she had with a departed loved one, which was actually, it actually was life-saving. Uh, she had, uh, at the time, her grandmother was in a, assisted, a nursing home, assisted care facility, something like that. And she was generally okay, you know, but uh, one day she starts, she walks in there and her grandmother's like, you know, she's like physically frail, but mentally sharp. And she goes in to visit her one day and she's very out of it. And she's like, what happened is like too sudden for, you know, this kind of decline to happen. She had a dream that night where her grandfather, who you know had departed, came to her in a dream and told her, look at the medicine. And she went back the next day and spoke to the nurse and the nurse said, no, we've been giving her the right medicine and everything. She had dream last, uh, the next day she had another dream and the father said, no, grandfather said, came back and said, no, you really have to check this. And she went back and she went back to the nurse and the nurse said, you know, we'll look, I'll look at it again. I know I'm giving her the right medicine, but then she says, no, really check this. They went and checked the charts and the night nurse had been giving her the wrong medicine. And when they realized, they realized this and they changed it. And then, you know, the grandmother was back to the way she had been before. So that was a life changing dream as a result of, of paying attention to it. You know, and I think that's the one point I want to get across to anybody listening to this is just pay attention to your dreams. Dreams are, are important. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, I I consider myself a dreamer in the sense where, like, I you know, my in my waking life, I I'm dreaming big. I want to live my dream, but it, you know, the dreams that we are having when we are sleeping it seems to be just as powerful if we can learn to you know decode them and harness them. What is the best way to decode a dream? Okay, well. Uh, I have a couple of steps, and if you go to my website, thedreamcoach.net, and go to the blog section, uh, I have a couple of articles that I've written there about how to remember your dreams and work with the dreams. But again, very briefly, there are a couple of major steps to to take. And the first one is to, it sounds really kind of obvious, but believe dreams are important because if you don't believe dreams are important, that's the way your brain operates. You're not going to remember your dreams. You know, you're, you're telling your subconscious, you know, why, why do that special mental effort to, to remember the dream? So first of all, I believe dreams are important. The second step would be to set the stage to enhance, to have, you know, to remember your dreams. And it's a very obvious things like before going to bed, you know, 
don't do alcohol or drugs. They inhibit the REM cycle where we have most of our dreams. So, you know, just stay away from doing that, or at least stay away from doing it hours before you go to bed. Uh, in fact, don't eat several hours before going to bed. Same thing. It, it inhibits, you know, the sleep cycle. Stay away from, uh, you know, uh, phones or televisions, anything that emits, you know, light waves that are going to inhibit your sleep. Again, setting the stage. Make your sleep space as inviting as possible. You know, have the, the best linens, you know, the the nicest atmosphere. Declutter your room. You know, if you have, you know, clothes on the floor or, or your, your night table's packed up with a bunch of things, you know, it's, it's, it's a very sub, you know, it's telling your subconscious it's not important. You know, you, sleep is important and, and you want to train your subconscious to believe that you believe it's important and it's a, it's a sacred space. And then uh, if you're not in the habit of remembering your dreams, when you go to bed, do what I like to call a dream declaration. As you're sitting there just before you go to sleep, tell yourself, tonight I'm going to remember a dream. And repeat it to yourself several times, even write it down on a piece of paper, put that paper under your pillow, you know, do whatever you can to enhance that. Uh, once you start remembering your dreams, if you want to take that a step further and do what's called dream incubation, where you might say, uh, let's say, you know, you have a job offer and you're debating whether to have it or not. You know, you could say, I want to have a dream that's going to tell me, give me guidance, should I take this job? So what you do before bed is, you know, you journal a little bit about that, you know, write it, you know, get it very clear in your mind that this is a question you want. Have the question in a way, very short question, you know, give me guidance to determine whether I want this job. Write that, put that under your pillow. Say that several times before you go to bed. And more likely than not, you will have a dream that will give you an insight into solving that problem or coming to an answer with the problem. But even going back to remembering the dream, if you're not in the habit of remembering your dream and you do have that dream, first thing to do when you're in bed is to not move because the part of the brain where dreams live is a different part of the brain where our everyday awake mind lives. And if you don't write it down, if you don't make a way to remember it, it's going to go away. Even the physical act of moving can get it away. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've had a dream or said, this is, wow, this is a great dream. And I'll forget that and I'll move and poof, it's gone. Yeah. So uh, you stay still. When you stay staying still, repeat the dream in your head as much as you can and then go write it down or record it. Get as much as you can. Even if you don't remember everything, more likely than not, in the morning when you wake up, you look at the dream, you either listen to what you've recorded or you look at what you've written down, more details will emerge and, and you will get there. Uh, and the other thing I want to say before I go about remembering uh, working with dreams is if this process doesn't work the first time, if you're a first time dreamer, this doesn't work. Be patient, be kind with yourself, because I look at dream remembrance kind of the same way I look at working out. When you go to a gym, you don't do just one push up and say, I'm in shape. You know, it takes effort. It takes, you know, creating a new habit. To remember a dream is to create a new habit. So you may not do it the first night, but if you keep doing this process, you will get into the habit of remembering your dreams. And then you go from there. And what do you do to understand them? Some dreams you understand right off the bat. You know, you like I said, if you had a, if you incubated a dream about should I take that job, and you had a dream that tells you yes, you know, you've answered your question. That's that's your dream. Or, or you have the dream where where your grandfather comes to you. There's no interpretation needed. You just remember that dream and you go with it. Where it gets tricky is where we have dreams that involve you know, places we've never been or activities we've never done or people we've never seen or just odd things happening. Those dreams where you say, what is going on here? That's where 
you get to see the dream that we don't dream in English, we dream in symbols. So what do the symbols mean? There are different ways of figuring that out. Uh, you can go to a dream dictionary that will tell you, you know, you dream about a car, it means this, or you dream about a bed, it means this, uh, which are all very helpful and uh, don't may, may not necessarily tell you the whole story. What's more important to ask yourself is, what does this symbol mean to me? And I'll give you a very brief example of that. I had a client who uh, had a dream about chickens. And I was trying to help her understand it. And the dream dictionary definition of a chicken, you know, deals with, you know, being fearful or being little or being submissive, you know, kind of, they're kind of negative connotations, but it did, but in the course of her dream, it didn't make sense because it was more of a happy dream. And, you know, why was she dreaming about chickens? So I asked what do chickens mean to you? Turns out that she raised chickens. Chickens were like pets to her. She loved chickens. So it's an example of how where something in a dictionary might give you a meaning. It doesn't really mean that to you. So the important thing is, what does the symbol mean to you? And you can write all these symbols down and put them all together, see what they mean to you, and then see, ask yourself, what is the emotion I've had in this dream? One of the most important things about a dream is how do I feel about the dream? You know, did the dream make me scared? Did the dream give me power? Did the dream make me laugh? You know, what was the emotion around the dream? And that also gives you clues because, you know, I could have a dream about, you know, I see a sun in, in your background. I could have a dream about the sun and, Maybe I'm photophobic and I hate the sun, so I it wouldn't be a happy dream for me. But you have a dream about the sun, you love the sun, so it would be a happy dream for you. So it's all about what it means to you and how it affects you. And then you look at, you know, what's going on in my life? Uh, does any of this relate to what's going on in my life? And usually you will find a connection, and that's where you would see where, uh, yes, this dream is telling me that, you know, I should forgive the person I had a little fight with the night before, uh, you know, make amends with that. And then the final thing is to take action on the dream. You know, if you get a message like that, or, or, or if you have a message where somebody, you have a dream about somebody you haven't seen in a long time, and maybe the message is you need to get in contact with that person, take action, do the action that the dream says. Otherwise, a dream is nothing more than a nice story. And, you know, it doesn't mean anything. The meaning comes from when it take you take action on it. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely been a couple of dreams in my life, in my life where I I dreamt something and I didn't kind of follow through. Like maybe it's something to do with like you know sports or something, or you know like oh you should pick this person to have a great game or you know something stupid you know minuscule like that, and then it happens. And you're like ah oh, why didn't I listen to my dream? Ah oh, I had a dream about this. You know this number. You know, but let me ask you about this. This is personal experience my my daughter passed my daughter oh my god i can't wait to fucking send that my sister my sister passed away years ago yeah. and um she, i was staying at my parents house and we i was with my wife in in the bed and it was like christmas eve or christmas one or the other and i I, I kind of had a dream, but like I, I woke up and like, I'm not sure if this ever happened to you, but I, I woke up and like I was frozen and I couldn't move my body, but I was awake and I was trying to, and I was trying to move and like, and all of a sudden like the, the, the shades, the curtains started like blowing, like going back and forth a little bit, you know, and it's the middle of winter in Massachusetts. So the windows are closed, you know, but like, I'm not sure if I, if I was, if, if I was dreaming about my sister or not, but like, it felt like there was like a presence in the room, but like, I, like I said, I, I, I was awake and I, and I was just trying to just move my arm, but I couldn't move my arm. I couldn't move anything. Have you ever heard any stories like that? Yeah. I mean, there's, it's a phenomenon called sleep paralysis. Where, where we're in the sleep state and and we can't move. And maybe in that state you were you were coming out of the dream 
uh, or maybe you were even lucid. Maybe you were lucid at that point and still in the dream, so you you couldn't move. And uh, there's really practical reason for this because if we have dreams where we're running around, you know, we don't want to get out of bed and start running around. So mm -hmm. you know, there's you know interesting about you know dream construction is you know so it keeps us in bed when we're doing this. Uh, but it's very possible, that, yeah, that you could have been lucid while having that dream. Mm -hmm. It is a very common experience. Okay, okay, because that was that was kind of wild at that time, you know. Like, ugh. yeah, uh, dreaming is 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 a very powerful thing. I think uh, I think you kind of hit it on the head where you really want to you know appreciate them and listen to them a little bit more than maybe we're accustomed to. Maybe certain cultures do it a little bit more than us and you know in, in american culture but do do dreams mean different things for different cultures uh they do and interesting you say that because you know i i love history so you know and i got to study you know study the history of dreams you know realizing that you know humankind has been dreaming ever since we've really become aware of ourselves and there are certain cultures where dreams are a very important part of the culture. I mean, the, the Iroquois Indians, for example, uh, would meet every morning. They would get together to discuss their dreams, and uh, you know, other and cultures over the years. The Greeks built temples of healing that were based on dreaming, where people would go into the temple, have a dream, and then you know, the the priests, you know, there would you know, just administer their medicine or their cure based on the dream. Uh, it, dreams have been powerful all along, but you, you, interesting you talk about how it hasn't been very important in, in American life. Uh, actually, back in the 1800s, it was very common for most Americans to, you know, get up and sit around the breakfast table and talk about their dreams, uh, which surprised me. I didn't realize this was even happening because uh who would have thought that you know people were paying attention to their dreams back then uh especially because uh you know during the dark ages you know where you know religions were burning people at the stake for believing in the dreams and paying attention to their dreams so it's been a turnaround throughout you know history but the very interesting thing is that the pandemic has sort of uh created a uh, reemergence of people's interest in dreams because what happened during the pandemic was because so many people had were staying home you know didn't weren't going to work so their sleep cycle had changed they were probably sleeping more and remembering more dreams and in a lot of cases having nightmares because it was such a you know crazy you know traumatic time uh, and you know, people were having more awareness. Uh, there's a, a great sleep researcher, Deidre Barrett, who, you know, did a study of pandemic dreams and, you know, had people send her their dreams, you know, and she got thousands and thousands and thousands of, you know, she had, she had more responses than she could have ever imagined. And, uh, you know, and, and I think that's, you know, it, it's, seep more into the popular culture now than than I think it has in, ever before and is continuing to you know even you know in my example you know I do a podcast that isn't 100% about dreams but it's you know I do a lot of talk about dreams on on the podcast and uh and I'm not the only one who does that kind of show so it, there's been a lot of resurgence in the interest of dreams well, that's wonderful. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, Debbie. I truly appreciate it. Can you please tell our audience where they can find you one more time? Sure. My website is thedreamcoach.net. And uh, you, know, you will see all kinds of things there. You could sign up. I have a little newsletter I do. And uh, there are some things there. I have a free book you could download that I wrote called 101 Dream Dates, How to Say I Love You to the Most Important Person in Your Life, You, which uh, is kind of a fun way to really get into dreams. Uh, you can email me at debbie at thedreamcoach.net. And I have a podcast called Dream Power Radio, which is available wherever you can get podcasts. And uh, 
I said, there's, there's a lot of content there about dreams and, and empowerment and how you could really become your best self. Excellent, Debbie. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Oh, thank you so much, Nicholas. Bye-bye. And if you would like to support the podcast, please visit Amazon.com and search Conquering Hill, 50 writing prompts for a dream chaser. And also visit Etsy.com and search Conquering Hill for all our gear. Thank you.